Yes. All right. Thank you very much. And I'm going to start my uh, timer so that I don't exceed my allotted time. Uh, excellencies and esteemed colleagues, it's really a great pleasure to have the opportunity to join such a distinguished panel to discuss how we at the U.S. National Academy of Sciences are looking at the future of global science and its importance to the SDGs. The National Academy of Sciences works with our academies of engineering and medicine to advise our nation's public policy issues with science, engineering, health, and technology at their core. We also work with science academies around the world through the Interacademy Partnership to provide advice on important national and global issues, including how to harness science, technology, and innovation most effectively to achieve the SDGs. Last month at our NAS annual meeting, I organized a discussion on identifying potential grand challenges for science as a way to galvanize action across re research disciplines towards important societal goals. What was interesting about this was I chose six independent speakers from across the breadth of all sciences and independently a number of them identified the SDGs repeatedly as an important organizing principle to target action at local, national, and global scales. Of course, any discussion about the future of science in meeting the SDGs, or more generally, um, are impossible without considering our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The National Academies and scientists around the world are focused on quickly delivering immediate evidence-based advice to the policymakers who need it most. It is important to note that even before the novel coronavirus became the overriding global issue, the very nature of science and research was undergoing a significant transformation. In my own country, most of the policy governing science is based on a landmark 1945 report called Science, the Endless Frontier. It was written by Vannevar Bush, a government official who helped marshal the academic research community to deliver the technological advances that enabled the US and its allies to win World War II. The Bush report ultimately provided the intellectual architecture for our world-class U.S. research enterprise and was the guiding force for government support for innovation and basic research that ultimately drove decades of U.S. prosperity, health, and national security. Earlier this year, the National Academy of Sciences convened a multi-stakeholder group to reflect on Bush's legacy and explore how science can continue to spark discoveries and best serve society in the 21st century. We focused on new ideas of how to fund science as government support is increasingly augmented by philanthropy and the private sector. We also discussed how science is now being done and how researches, research our results are being communicated. Science as practiced today is far more international it's more collaborative, it's more interdisciplinary, more dependent on data and observations from novel and expensive facilities, more important to economic prosperity, and a greater drival of social change than it was 75 years ago when Bush wrote his landmark report. Now, as the COVID-19 pandemic unfolds, it will only accelerate some of these trends. Indeed, the global scientific enterprise has come together at unprecedented scales and speeds to understand this virus and find ways to mitigate its impacts. Importantly, around the world, scientists are gathering data and reviewing scientific findings with an eye towards capturing insights that would be unavailable if we were not um, unintentionally living through a series of tests of policy responses to the evolution of this pandemic. So how could or should our experience with COVID-19 shape our future thinking about addressing the SDGs? Well, I have three recommendations. First, I suggest we start to treat each of the SDGs just like we do the pandemic. Each of them is an urgent global crisis, 
impacting people and our economies that require an all hands on deck response from the science and policy communities to address. That is how we have behaved for the coronavirus and that is how we should forthwith deal with the SDGs. As a corollary to this first suggestion, we should supercharge the rate of global progress by harnessing the same tools we are using now for the pandemic. For example, video conferencing, rather than waiting for calendars to sufficiently clear that people can fly around the world for short meetings that could have been accomplished electronically. Embracing open science to accelerate the rate of dissemination of new knowledge internationally and exchanging um, experiences so that we can learn from each other's good and failed experiments. But in order to enable this, we need to encourage the availability of broadband everywhere and address large inequalities in access to technology. My second recommendation is that collaboration at a distance only works if scientists already have established a basis for trust through shared experiences. All academies and institutions should invest now in our young scientists, offering them opportunities to study abroad, participate in exchange programs, and attend foreign meetings. These experiences create lifelong connections to an international cohort of colleagues um, who, with whom they will work to solve today's and tomorrow's challenges. As a specific example of how to promote the second challenge, we should be providing opportunities to our national and global young academies. They represent a curated group of future leaders who are already tackling tough problems and they are far more attuned to the most current forms of electronic collaboration tools than the researchers of my generation. Finally, my third suggestion is the coronavirus is the classic example of a problem that we were not, will not solve anywhere until we solve it everywhere. There are others in the SDGs, climate change being a great example, that also need to be solved everywhere before it is solved anywhere. During an era of growing nationalization, scientists must resist that trend and work ever more closely together. I remain hopeful that the forces of our common humanity that unite us will be stronger than those that divide us, or we may be doomed. We at the National Academy of Sciences stand ready to work with you and our colleagues around the world to explore and develop these approaches to international collaboration and research partnerships. And thank you very much for your attention today. I look forward to our discussion. Thank you so much, Marcia, if I may, um, for those very stimulating thoughts and, and concrete recommendations. I think it's very valuable also for us to be reminded that as we think through these implications of the current pandemic on our STI systems that we remember that we were in a process of transformation already. I think that's very valuable. And um, so thank you for that.